so I'm a voracious reader. I read a ton of books. So far this year, I've read 22 brand new books and I've reread 20 books. So I, I tend to read anywhere between 60 and 70 books. Usually they're split half and half between rereads and, and new books. I love rereading books that I enjoy. It's just something that I've always want, you know, liked to do all the way back from when I was a, you know, just a wee lad, as they say. So I love to read. Now, I'm not one of those readers that enjoy a physical book, or I, I shouldn't say I, I don't enjoy a physical book more. I just don't need the physical book anymore. I used to obviously be that way, um, mainly because that's what there was. I mean, we didn't have Kindles back in the day. There were physical books, and if you didn't like those, you didn't read, right? So now that you know digital ebooks are a thing and they're kind of more prevalent, I've switched entirely to digital, mostly because I ran out of room on my bookshelves, but also it's just easier when you get a little older and you have bad vision you can actually zoom in on the text and be able to read things and that's awesome you can't do that in a physical book so i read a ton digitally now i don't like to use kindle and i don't like nook and i don't like kobo or whatever they are i want to be able to manage my own digital library now, one of the cool things that has happened over the course of the last 10 years or so is that there's not as much DRM in books as there used to be. Like, it used to be, if you bought something from Amazon, it was just there. Now, that's still kind of the case, but you can find places to get books, you know, legitimately that don't have DRM on them, which is really, really nice. Now, you're not supposed to share those, and I don't. You know, I'm, I'm sticking to the letter of the law and all that stuff. But I really enjoy being able to take non-DRM books and manage them myself. I just enjoy doing that. And it allows me to kind of have my own collection. It's kind of like having my own collection of music or movies or TV shows. And it's not something that I really ever expected to do, but I have found that I truly, honestly enjoy it. Now... The problem comes in is that there aren't a lot of different applications to help you manage your ebook library. There's just not. Now, there are quite a few readers out there, and maybe someday I will do a video on those type of applications. But today I wanted to focus on ebook management. Now, I don't expect this video to do well because this is kind of a very niche thing, but. I enjoy it, so I'm going to make the video about it anyway. So, like I said, there aren't a ton of different solutions out there when it comes to managing your ebooks. The two that I've tried and spent a lot of time in are Kavita, which is a self-hosted web application. It is run through Docker, and it is not meant for ebooks. It's just not. You can tell it immediately. It works okay, but it assumes that every book you have is part of a series, and if you don't have that as being the case, then it really doesn't manage them all that well, especially because you then have to go in and edit the metadata to give the books this, a series in order for it to be properly sorted. And it just, it ended up being a really big mess. So Kavita was not something that I stick, stuck around with all that much or all that long. So I had to find something different and I resisted the obvious solution. The obvious solution is Calibre, because Calibre has been around for a long time, it does a really good job, but the UI, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to show a picture of the, like the default UI here, it is atrocious. It is so, so astonishingly bad. Like, it, it, it's like the developers of Yast decided to get together and make an ebook management solution. <laughs> and now, you guys know how I like OpenSUSE, but Yast is not a well-designed application. So, they're in the same vein of not being well-designed. Now, it doesn't really matter how well-designed an application is, as long as it's functional. I can, I, I understand that, but I'm one of those people, I want my applications to at least look as good as they, they function at least partially there in Calibre for the longest time I thought just looked like that and ugh, that just looks bad right but it's not actually the case so let me show you what my Calibre actually looks like now you guys are going to get a glimpse into my ebook library here there's some books there that are a little weird uh, for a grown straight man to have in there I'm a little bit of a romance girly 
I'll freely admit it. <laughs> I can't. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I do like some romance. But I also like science fiction. I'm a very eclectic reader, but there's also some lit RPG and stuff in there. If you catch a cover with a scantily clan clad anime person on it, that's the lit RPG. You can't have lit RPG and not have anime stuff. It's just kind of the rule, unfortunately. It's just the way that it goes. But I'll try to avoid the not safe for work stuff. But anyways, this is what Calibre looks like for me. And I'm blushing a little bit now because you guys are seeing my ebook library and there's some stuff in there. But <laughs> anyways, the point is, is that this looks good. Like, right? It has all of the colors of my desktop environment and it doesn't have really weird ugly icons i prefer the more minimal aspect here like this but there are some actual other things that you can do to make this look good you just go to preferences look and feel and then you can adjust the colors or change the icon theme and you can actually make them look a little bit better i think that by default it uses it uses this one right and those are not great icons uh, they, they have a more flat icon set here you can also i believe through the use of placing an icon set in like a directory somewhere upload your own i'm not sure about that but i think you can do that but it does have quite a few here that you can use if you want to i've just decided to turn all the icons off as much as possible i think that just works better for me you can also adjust the fonts so that they look a little bit you know more like they fit in with your system you can inherit the the colors from your color scheme which is something you can just do by pressing this button here and then okay which is extraordinary because by default it doesn't do that you can also make your own theme if you wanted to do that but might as well just use the one that you're using on your desktop environment anyways and then you can also go through and change how it looks in terms of the grid and stuff like that so you can there's an extraordinary amount of customization here in terms of look and feel and that is what finally got me into using Calibre because I wanted to actually look good as well as you know function well and it does in fact function well so let's get out of the whole looks and feel thing and talk a little bit about some of the features my, my favorite feature by far is the ability to edit metadata so you just go here and it gives you a whole thing where you can basically edit the metadata i can hit this download metadata thing it will look it up on several different places now goodreads is not default that's done through a plug plugin i'll talk about that more later and uh, you can ju you just this is the right one it gives you the description so you kind of kind of make sure that it's the right one hit okay it'll give you some options for the cover i always make sure i look for the highest resolution cover because having more resolution is always you know better one sometimes i have it sometimes i don't i press okay it will save it and i have you know okay or next or whatever right and that gives me all of the stuff and i didn't have to do anything so when i was using kavita i had to go do all of this stuff by hand and not only that i had to use either uh, sigil or vim in order to actually edit the xml file of the epub to get this stuff in there and that was a painful experience let me tell you it was so so bad and i hated every moment of it <laughs> like I, I i don't dislike xml xml is fine it's basically just a fancier version of html in some cases there's you know obviously some differences there so i don't hate it it's not like i it's not like haskell or something uh, but by the time i was done with my kavita experience i didn't like xml anymore i hated editing that metadata so this is so so much better and it's just i mean it's just a click right it's, it was simple as that so another thing that i really like so if i hit okay here it's actually going to, here's I'll just step into the downside for just a second. Kavita, uh, Calibre can be slow when it's doing stuff, either looking up data or writing data to disk. Now, it's going to be faster probably for you because you're probably going to be storing your Calibre library locally. I'm not. I'm storing it on my home server connected via NFS, and NFS is notoriously slow, so there you go, right? So another thing that I really like about this let's just go to the next thing is that i can share this with my kindle applications so i'm going to actually end up having to blur that email address but uh, basically i can just go here click one of these here it will send it to my kindle app on my phone or my ipad now i still prefer to you know i shouldn't say i prefer if I find it the easiest to use Kindle because it's, I can actually get the ebooks from here 
to a device where I can then go read my books. Because I don't read my books here at the computer. I want to, you know, when I'm reading, I want to get away from the computer because I spend my entire day here. I don't want to have to spend here reading as well. So I send my ebooks to a device. I can either read them on my phone, on the Kindle that I actually have, which I hardly ever actually use, or, you know, uh, on my iPad. I can do any of those things and it's just send it via e email, which is really nice to do. Now, I don't know if any of the other ebook services have that ability. I'm assuming they probably do because there's other options here, but I use Kindle because it seems to be the easiest thing to do. Uh, now, there's another way you can actually also do this. You can actually make Calibre into a web server, so it will then serve up your ebook library into a web server. I don't do that because I don't want to read my book in a browser. I have no interest in really doing that, but you can do that. Another thing that this goes well with this is an application called Calibre Web. And this is a Docker-based solution that connects to your Calibre library. It just basically looks at the same directory where your Calibre library is and then allows you to have access to all of your books online anywhere. And it has a lot of the same features as Calibre does. So you can say, for instance, go here, say I wanted to read this book here, I can just go up here, hit this, and it would actually send it to my Kindle, just like I would in Calibre. I can edit the metadata here, just like I can in Calibre. I can do any number of things. I can also delete stuff, or I can go back to the book here, and just read it. If I wanted to read it, I could just go here and read it. It would actually show me the book. Now, I have no interest in reading a book in a browser whatsoever, so I don't use this feature, but I could if I wanted to. So that's something that is available to you if you want. What I really use this for is managing my ebooks when I'm not in front of my computer. So if I want to send myself an ebook, uh, from, like, say, my phone, the easiest way to do that is to go to my self-hosted Calibre web install, send it from there instead of having to go actually to my computer to send it through Calibre. So this basically gives me the ability to have access to all of my books no matter where I'm at because I have this exposed to the internet through uh, Nginx and, and TrueScale and all that stuff. So I, I'm able to do a lot of the stuff I do in Calibre here when I'm not at my computer, which is nice. So Calibre has a ton more features, but another thing that I should probably cover is the ability to add uh, plugins. So if you go to preferences and then plugins and then get new plugins, there are a ton of plugins here. I'm talking uh, several dozen plugins and they do many different things. Some of them are about editing metadata. Some of them are about gathering metadata. Uh, some of them are about adding books from different places. So one of my favorite one uh, my, one of my favorite plugins is one that allows you to basically integrate with Libby, which is a like a library tool. So you can borrow ebooks from your library. There's a Libby plugin for Calibre, which allows you to browse books on Libby, reserve them, uh, rent them out when you you're re you know when you're ready to read them and then return them all right inside of Calibre, which means you don't have to go to your phone in order to manage any of that stuff, which is really nice, right? Another one that I don't use but see the advantage of is one called Fanfic Fair. I believe that's here somewhere. Uh, let's see if I can actually find it. It's this one here. It basically allows you to download fan fiction from any number of sites. Now, I don't want my fan fiction messing around with my actual fiction. So I don't use this uh, here. I use the the terminal version, which basically allows me to just download that stuff in a directory somewhere, and I don't manage it with Calibre. But if you mix those two things together, that's another solution for you. And there's just a ton of different plugins here that you can use in order to make your experience on Calibre really good. And you can install all of them right from here. You don't have to do anything fancy like download them externally, put them in a folder or unzip things or whatever. You can just install whatever you want right from here, which is nice. Now I have two big problems when it comes to Calibre. First is that when you have a series, like let me get out of this here for a second. When you have a series, which I have a ton of different series, and I, I want to go see all of those series, you can do that, but by default it just shows you all of the series. So in order to find just the series, you go here and you click on that and it will just show you the series, which is 
fine, but it requires a couple of extra steps. You first you have to find just the book, one of the books that are in the series, and then you have to go over here and click on the title of the series in order to show the series. If you go over here to just series, it shows you all the series that you have, and while you can sort this by series, it's not necessarily as useful as having the ability to just go, you know, go to series. Now you can go to alphabetical series if you want. So I just wanted to see all the H ones. I can do that, but you know, it's not quite as convenient as I would want it to be because I, sometimes I just want to see the series that I'm currently, you know, into, and I don't want to have to navigate to it as much as it feels like I have to. So that's one thing. Another thing that I don't really care for is the slowness. I talked a little bit about that. And then there's the problem with finding your preferences. Now, this here is not so bad, but if you get into things like your the tweaks or whatever. This is not a well-designed interface for managing tweaks. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of your plug, if you add a lot of plugins, your plugins will put a lot of their settings inside of this page here. And, you know, you have to kind of scroll through the list and they're not well organized whatsoever. Now you can search for them, uh, but you have to know what you're searching for. And a lot of times you won't. Uh, another thing is trying to find out how to change the layout. Now you can change the layout, uh, down here with this button here and you know it, it's fine and it gives you some different options so if I want to show just the covers I can do that you know like this and it looks nice right but you have to know that that's there and it just I don't know it took me a while to discover this and, and that's really the point I'm trying to make is that some of the features that this has because there are so many there are some discoverability issues and that leads you to missing some things, and I'm sure I've missed many things. Like, there are many features here that are probably very useful for me that I haven't found yet. And that, you know, leads me to not enjoying it as much as I possibly could, right? It, it, it leaves me feeling left out. Now, I will say that I enjoy finding those new features when I do find them, so that's cool. Uh, and you do constantly find new features, which is, you know, nice. So. Um, there is that aspect of it, but it's still this discoverability of features that Calibre has is kind of lacking. So there's that. Uh, the last thing I will say is that I have had some issues with the whole send to Kindle thing on the actual desktop app. It works great on Calibre web. It doesn't work so well in the application. It works sometimes. So hit or miss there, unfortunately. I have a feeling that I'm doing something wrong there. I'm going to look into it, so it might just be me, a me problem. So, overall, Calibre is awesome. I love it. I, I have not regretted my switch from Kavita, like, a single minute. Like, it is so, so much better than Kavita ever was. And it has so many different features. It Once you get the UI looking not like the 1980s, it looks fantastic. It works fantastic in most regards. With Calibre Web, it looks and feels and functions even better because you have access to everything everywhere without having to set up a ton of crazy things. Calibre Web was really easy to install with Docker. So if you're into, into that and you know a little bit of, of Docker, you can just install it real easy. I did mine through Portainer. It was just putting in a, a stack and a Docker Compose file. So it was very, very easy to do. And it, overall, those two things work in concert very, very well and give you access to your eBooks anywhere you want. And that's great. I found myself going out and getting a whole bunch more eBooks. I think I've added like 150 eBooks over the course of the last few months. And uh, now, not all that is because of Calibre, but since then, I've added quite a few that I didn't have before, and that's great. I've spent more money on ebooks in the last month than I probably should have, but I really tru and truly enjoy managing my own collection of ebooks, even if there's a you know a good chance that I get to like 10,000 ebooks. Like right now, I only have like 532. Not that many. Now, and that's not all of my ebooks. Some of my ebooks are still, you know, locked inside of a Kindle somewhere. So, you know, it's it's not the grandest collection yet. But overall, I'm slowly transitioning transitioning to the point where I manage everything here, and that's just a great feeling. So, I love Calibre. If you are a reader and you like to manage your own ebooks as well, 
Let me know what you think of this in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast or on Ko-fi or YouTube. Those links will also be in the video description below. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon, Ko-fi, and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. If you want to support my ebook habit, along with making me make more Linux content, you guys can also head on over to the shop, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise, all the proceeds for which go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.